So it's been one year at Boston College and I definitely have a lot of opinions about certain aspects of the school. I am now a rising sophomore, but technically a rising junior since I'm advanced standing, meaning that I am only doing three years at BC instead of the traditional four for my bachelor's degree. So that might equal a slightly different academic lifestyle at BC than the average student. If you just keep that in mind, I'm sure I will still provide some useful information. This video is not gonna be very structured. I'm just gonna talk about some of the pros and cons and how I feel about certain uh, parts of the lifestyle at BC. So I am a psychology major in the College of Arts and Sciences, as well just for those of you who are curious. A definitely large pro for me is the location of BC. I'm actually from Long Island, so Boston is only a small drive up, and it was definitely helpful in terms of moving in, moving out, and uh, being comfortable in the environment really, especially with the weather. BC is quite a bit away from the Boston city if you're actually looking to go to Boston without a car, which is what you essentially have to do freshman year unless you're from Boston, the Boston area. By the T, the T being the tram, it will take about an hour to get to Boston city, which is not too far if you wanna go on a weekend trip with your friends or just go out by yourself, get some food, do some studying. But it's pretty convenient for that but it definitely will take up your entire afternoon or morning if you decide to go out to Boston. But I will say that I really do enjoy the kind of suburban lifestyle of BC and of course the beautiful campus. Uh, insert photos, things. <laughs> um, definitely in comparison to other Boston schools like BU or Northeastern. BC has a traditional campus with a lot of green space and a lot of areas to study and whatnot. So that's definitely a pro for me. Another huge pro is the traditions and sports college events that happen on campus. Since we have a pretty large campus and we have a stadium and a hockey rink and all that, there's a whole bunch of events that happen throughout the year that are just great events to attend, to go with your friends and just to enjoy the college life. We have a bunch of D1 sports, especially women's lacrosse, which is currently doing its best. I think they've won the nationals recently, which is awesome. And then we have D1 football, D1 hockey, and a couple others that are slipping my mind. But we have uh, the tailgates before every football game, and that's definitely a large part of fall semester where you can go to your friends just to the game or enjoy the tailgating and you know just have a good time. There are also a bunch of other events that you definitely want to be a part of such as Modstock, Marmon, which is Marathon Monday, and then Stoke Set or Up Showdown. Uh, basically what these are are basically just concerts with whatever artists that BC decides to bring in as well as Alk Showdown is a dance competition between the BC dance groups and then Modstock is well Modstock is the concert and then Mudstock is the volleyball tournament in mud which is interesting but you know when you get to BC just know that there's definitely a lot of traditions and fun events to go to across the year. Another pro for me would actually be the Greek life. So BC does not have any Greek life. And I know that's important to some people and some people want to have the Greek like experience, but I didn't see that as a priority for me. And I think not having that on campus definitely allows for a different environment compared to other schools that have Greek life and that use Greek life as a large part of their social scene. Um, so that's just a pro for me really does depend on what you prefer and what you know about Greek life. But I will say don't let that deter you because there are definitely ways to experience the Greek life through different avenues, if you know what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> the Plex. So our school has this amazing gym that we call the Plex. It's four stories, all the machines you want, a swimming pool, a rock climbing wall, and a bunch of different classes that you can take. I myself am a very big fitness advocate. If you're interested in fitness at all, or you just want to get to learn how to do fitness and kind of want to take like an intro class, then the gym is definitely a great place to start. And there's a bunch of amenities that just make being a gym rat like an easier experience. And I, I love the Plex, I'll stand by it. I don't care what anyone says. There's only one slight inconvenience if you do end up in Newton campus, 
which has to do with the housing, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, so whole bunch of amenities, you can rent stuff, you just have to tap in and then that's all to go. Uh, it's totally free, free as well. So you get your student ID at the start of the year, all you have to do is fill out this like waiver and then you can just tap in and go to the gym whenever you want free of charge. You can't bring other people in, but I think you can get a visitor pass as well. Now for the important part, academics and how difficult it is. I would say that BC is not a extremely intense academic school, but I will say depending on the choices that you make, it may make it easier or harder. Obviously the most important would be your major, depending on if you're a business major or a theology major or a STEM major like I am myself. and if you do advanced standing or not, but that's pretty rare. There are religion and philosophy requirements, which can be a turnoff, but I will say, do, don't be too afraid of it, especially if you aren't religious, because depending on your professor, depending on the class, you won't actually have to like seriously study the Bible or implement any religious lifestyle into your own. And I actually enjoyed my uh, philosophy theology class a lot. I took perspectives, which covers all four semesters of philosophy theology that is required for you. And I would definitely recommend taking that because I just don't think it's worth it to worry about it later on in your career. So I actually love my philosophy or my perspectives professor and shout out to Professor Frost. Definitely take him if you get the chance. Um, now talking about the workload and how difficult it is being a student here. Again, it depends on your major and how uh, what type of courses you choose to take, but I think it's pretty generic. A lot of reading for obviously English, for philosophy, theology, and then depending on the professor and a couple hours, like six, six to eight hours of studying for some more intensive STEM classes, uh, studying and homework, of course. Besides that, BC is a top tier research university. So definitely come here if you're thinking about STEM and you're interested in research or if you're pre-med, there are a whole bunch of clubs and opportunities you can get involved with. It is rather difficult to get involved freshman year, especially for me, given some of the scheduling issues and if you can't exactly make a lot of these early club meetings. But I will say, if you're looking for it, you can definitely be able to find it. Now onto the cons. So. My current stance on BC is that I actually do really enjoy the environment and kind of the lifestyle that I've made for myself at college, but I will say that I'm definitely lacking in the social department. And this is in part due to some roommate events that occurred and some scheduling conflicts and as well as my personality as a more secluded person rather than like a big party goer. Um, always out there extroverted type. I think if you are one of those extroverted types, big party goer, love to get out there and meet new people, it's definitely a easy environment to find friends and to meet the people that you want to be around. But for me, it took a little bit longer and definitely through mutual friends and club organizations was where I found the majority of my friends that uh, I have now. A lot of the cultural clubs kind of take the role of Greek life, even though it's a little bit different. But if you're looking for kind of a community to be able to get into easily and be a part of, then cultural clubs are definitely the way for you. So the party scene is not the greatest. We don't have Greek life, but if you're looking for parties, you can always go to Boston for the frats there, or there's going to be on campus stuff if you really want to find it. It's not that hard to find. But personally, I'm not a big party person, so I don't have very much to say about that. On with the social life, I think the easiest way to develop friendships is definitely through individual friendships and kind of going between groups instead of just staying in one friend group. And going to college is always just going to be a difficult experience and figuring out how you make friends, how you can stay in touch with people without the high school schedule is going to be difficult. But trust me when I say just give it time and trust in yourself and it will most likely turn out well. So more cons. The administration for BC is definitely a sore point to talk about. So the average student like me does not really get involved that much with administration and like student government stuff but 
from what I've heard from my friends and a lot of public opinion, the administration is quite religious and Christian. Well, oh, I shouldn't say Christian, but Jesuit. So they do follow some of the ideals regarding that in a little bit more of a negative way. So the LGBTQ support is quite lacking. Uh, sexual health is not supported at all. So technically condoms are illegal or not illegal, but not allowed on campus. Um, but there are obviously student organizations that are not officially BC that assist with that. Um, as well as the environmental stance of administration is quite horrible. So if that really concerns you a lot, then I don't think BC is the choice for you. But if you're not too concerned about that, then we can just move on and call it a day. One of the biggest cons to BC though, is the housing and the class picking cycle. So housing is by far the worst because it's a lottery system and depending on certain factors, you might only get three years on campus or four years. So that's always a bit hectic and quite difficult to deal with. And freshman year, there's the chance that you get placed into Newton campus, which is where I was. Newton campus is basically just um, an off-campus housing site, which is kind of think of it like, like a mini housing sector, but it's probably a 20 minute walk from campus and a six minute bus drive. So if you do get placed in Newton, you're a bit detached from Maine, but I think I ended up enjoying it decently and it wasn't too bad of an experience. That being said, there are also chances that you get shafted in your housing later on in the year. So it is a lottery system and BC is currently over housed, I believe. So you might get stuck in traditional housing your second and even third year, according to some of the people I know. And that's definitely not the greatest experience. But if that's your biggest complaint and everything else is fine, then I still think BC is a great choice. As for class selection, that again is lottery based depending on your grade. So freshmen will always go last, sophomores and then juniors and seniors obviously, but there's a lottery for the picking in the, the grade. So certain people in the freshman year will get to pick before the other freshmen. And there is a rather annoying problem where a lot of the major classes do get filled up very quickly. That does get annoying, but I think planning your class schedule ahead and planning it around the chance that you might not get the classes that you want is very important and definitely helped me get through my freshman year without too much of a worry with the class selection. So diversity is definitely also a big thing to talk about. We are a primarily white institution and it may be rather difficult to get accustomed to it if you're coming from a very diverse high school or uh, from an international school, of course. I don't think there's too much of an influence on that um, with my lifestyle. There's no blatant racism or anything and even subconscious racism, I wouldn't say really exist. And being Asian American, I don't think that really influenced my experience at BC very much. If you're very concerned about finding other people that have the same culture as you or just are similar in upbringing to you, cultural clubs are definitely the way to go with that. So there are really big cultural clubs for a lot of the Asian ethnicities. So like KSA, VSA, um, CSA, the, the biggest ones, I, well, no, not the biggest ones, but some of the bigger ones, uh, Korean, uh, Korean Student Association, Vietnamese Student Association, and Chinese Student Association. And then there's also uh, clubs for like the Muslim students, which is a very big club and quite, quite nice people. Um, so if you're too concerned about that, I'd say be excited for the cultural clubs and don't be too scared that it's primarily white. It's, it hasn't really changed my opinion on the school very much. And I guess the last thing to talk about is the academic services and the tutoring that BC supposedly provides. According to one of my friends who has uh, experienced the tutoring services, it's quite horrible. Now, depending on the professors that you have and the TAs that you have, I'd say professors are generally very open with grades and discussing about um, how you can improve your grades. So don't be afraid to go to office hours and talk to the professor about 
how you can get used to college academics and how you can learn through there. But the official tutoring services is pretty trash. So if that's something you're relying on, uh, then definitely maybe consider some other options. You can get an outside tutor, but again, that's monetary restrictions and whatnot. But just to keep that in mind. And I guess one more thing. The accessibility at BC is very, very bad. We don't have ramps for those in wheelchairs, and a lot of the website is not very friendly to vision impaired or hearing impaired. And yeah, that's just something that BC has to handle and improve. To wrap up this video, I'll talk about how I feel going into the sophomore year. I'm definitely surprised at how my freshman year went. It definitely didn't go as I expected, but I think I learned a lot of lessons about my academic life, my social life, and how to balance that, as well as being alone a lot of the time. Because of some roommate situations, no, no, no bad, bad uh, views towards my roommate, by the way. I love him, but just some stuff happened, and that left me alone a lot, so it gave me a couple things to deal with and oh i guess i should talk about this mental health support supposedly there is a lot of resources that you can go to on campus and i've actually been in contact with one of the psychiatrists because i am a psych major of course they seem very friendly and i've talked to him about a couple things but the official diagnosis is a bit difficult uh, if you are experiencing mental health issues, but there are definitely a lot of groups and people that you can go to if you're experiencing uh, a difficult time at BC. So going into sophomore year, I think I have high expectations, you know, my freshman year wasn't the greatest, wasn't what I expected, but I've definitely learned a lot and I think we'll learn some more moving on. And there's one thing I forgot to talk about and that's the food at Boston College. So. I wouldn't say that BC food, BC dining is a pro or a con really. Depending on how much you eat, whether you're a guy or a girl and your dietary habits, the amount of money, uh, the meal plan that they give you is going to be enough or way too much. So next year, uh, oh, okay. For context, I'm also a BC dining intern. I work with the cultural clubs and dining to organize events and stuff. So I have a little bit of an inside scoop on what's going on. Um, next year, they're actually implementing different plans. So if you eat a little bit more, then you can pay more and get more meal plan money. And if you eat less, you can pay less and get less. The way that the meal plan works is it's essentially just credit. So you pay for the meal plan, I think it's like 2000 something, and you get that much money in your account for the semester. And you also get, I think it's dining bucks versus eagle bucks. So dining bucks you can spend at the dining halls. And mind you, the food at the dining halls is very, very expensive. I think an average dinner, I'd say probably anywhere from 18 to 23, okay, let's say 18-ish dollars. and the prices for meals is absolutely bonkers um i'm personally a very cheap person so i didn't eat very much at the start of the semester because i was concerned about how much money i would have at the end of the semester but then i realized i was losing weight and i had to figure something else so i just got a job at um one of the dining halls and that kind of helped me because they give like uh, meal meal swipes and whatnot so the food in terms of taste and how much variety they have, it's all right. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best, but I wouldn't say it's absolutely horrible. There are some horror stories about bugs and raw chicken and hair, but again, that hasn't happened to me yet, so hopefully it's not too common. Um, the variety is pretty average. You have your normal like American diner food, burger, pizza, and there's always the staple of grilled chicken and rice, which is horrible um, but they also have kind of ethnic foods like chicken tikka masala and like a Korean grilling greens bowl but it's not very ethnic but it does taste all right so I'd say if you're a big foodie it's not the best place but you'll survive and if you don't care at all then it's great that's about it hope you got something out of this video and if you have any more questions feel free to DM me on Instagram in the description.
Bye. <laughs>